Sometimes I hear a nugget of a presidential story, and I'm amazed. First, how have I not heard the story before? And second, this is an unbelievable story. How have I not heard this before? That's the case when I heard about President John Quincy Adams funding an expedition to the center of the earth. That was all I heard. And the reason I hadn't heard the story before is because it's a myth. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. In the time of John Quincy Adams, many people wondered what lay deep beneath the Earth's surface. One popular hypothesis was that the Earth was hollow and filled with other hollow shells, like a nesting doll. Each had its own atmosphere where animals and plants could live. The idea of a hollow Earth was first proposed in 1692 by Edmund Halley, an English astronomer, mathematician, and physicist who became the namesake for Halley's Comet. By 1774, the idea of a hollow earth had been definitively disproved. However, there were still those who believed in a hollow earth. The most well-known of those in the U.S. was John Cleve Sims Jr., an army captain during the War of 1812, and in another presidential connection, the first cousin of Anna Sims, the wife of the ninth president, William Henry Harrison. In 1818, Sims published a single-page circular stating his take on the hollow earth theory. I declare the earth is hollow and habitable within, containing a number of solid spheres, one within the other, and that it is open at the poles. I pledge my life in support of this truth, and am ready to explore the hollow if the world will support and aid me in the undertaking. Sims spent the next several years gaining support through captivating lectures. Soon he attracted the attention of Jeremiah Reynolds, an Ohio newspaper editor, who abandoned his career in order to join Sims on the nationwide lecture circuit in front of sold-out venues. To prove his theory, Sims decided to lead an expedition to the hole at the North Pole to climb inside to meet the beings who lived below. He asked for 100 brave companions to join him on his mission to cross the frozen sea with the help of some reindeer. Sims was never able to get his expedition off the ground. Eventually, Sims and Reynolds parted ways as Reynolds' views evolved with new evidence, but he still pushed for polar exploration. Only now he no longer believed in holes at the poles or the prospect of subterranean worlds. In 1828, Reynolds, with support from marine and scientific societies, proposed an expedition to explore the South Pacific, which would include the South Pole. He successfully lobbied the House of Representatives to pass a resolution asking President John Quincy Adams to send a research vessel, which Adams supported. This expedition and Adams' endorsement of it has been connected to the hollow earth theory because of Reynolds' association to it and this entry in Adams' diary. The theory itself has been much ridiculed and is in truth so visionary that Reynolds has now varied his purpose to the proposition of fitting out a voyage of circumnavigation to the Southern Ocean. Does this mean Adams also believed in the hollow earth theory? Language is a funny thing, especially when viewed through the lens of history. Today, saying something is, quote, in truth so visionary would mean it is brilliant ahead of its time. Back then, it meant being the product of a disturbed imagination. So no, Adams was not a believer, and Adams only agreed to fund the expedition after Reynolds had already abandoned the idea of the hollow earth. Despite Adams' approval, the expedition didn't get off the ground. Andrew Jackson won the election of 1828 and canceled it, leaving Reynolds to fund his trip through private sources, which he did. Reynolds set sail in 1829, but it didn't go well. Eventually, the crew mutinied and marooned Reynolds in Chile for more than two years. After returning to the U.S., Reynolds wrote the 1839 book called Mocha Dick, based on an elusive white sperm whale he had heard of off the coast of Chile, which became the basis for Herman Melville's Moby Dick 12 years later. A government-funded exploration of the Southern Sea was finally approved by President Martin Van Buren and set sail in 1838. Despite his crucial advocacy for the trip, Reynolds had burned too many political bridges to be included in this four-year voyage. The myth that Adams funded a journey to the center of the Earth, or that he believed in a hollow Earth, has continued to flourish online. There was even an online article in the Smithsonian Magazine, which has since been corrected. Although he did not support a journey to the center of the Earth, Adam's advancement of knowledge for the natural world was notable. 
he fought for the creation of a national observatory, which became the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., and ensured that the money from the James Smithson estate went towards the founding of the Smithsonian Institution. There are many stories about our presidents that are assumed to be true, because we've heard them so many times. But even the apocryphal ones can teach us something. In this case, I learned that language changes over time, and that without that knowledge, we can be led astray. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please help out the channel, like and subscribe, and please visit POTUS.com to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.